What up, y'all? This your boy Ace here, and welcome to Track and Ace. So, what a weird final. <laughs> Crazy weird final, man. Very entertaining, though. And one of the things that I appreciate with Track is it's so unpredictable. You don't know. Sometimes it seems like there's going to be a guaranteed winner. Then just something happens where... <laughs> The unexpected happens. It doesn't even have to be the winner. It could be who's ever coming in second or third place or fourth. It's so crazy and chaotic, man. You just never know. I'm going to talk about my betting experience because I had a bad experience with this one. <laughs> and uh, I take the blame for anybody who did bet, who watched my preview. Because I know you lost money if you took my advice. Um, But yeah, let, let, let's talk about this, man. So, as guys see up here on the screen. Keely Hodgkinson, Demo, and Mary Moore. So Mary Moore ends up winning gold unexpectedly. Uh, got a new PB as well. Uh, one minute fifty six seconds point oh three. Won it for um, Mary Moore for Kenya. And how about this shocker? Keely Hodgkinson gets the silver medal again with a minute fifty six point thirty four. Should have probably been the one. If anybody's going to be a thing more, it should have been Keely Hodgkinson for gold, right? Not for silver. But that's what it ended up being. It ended up being for silver. And you see a thing more. A minute 56.61 seconds. A season's best for her, but she only ran like, what, two times? Or well, one time before uh, Worlds. So it, it was probably, I think, for a thing more, like some people were saying, it was a case of. Not racing enough. Not taking enough races. Um, and this is something that happens in the sport a lot that I've noticed. Is that there's always competitors that don't race enough throughout the season. And, 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 it, and it shows on the big stages. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that right uh, after this. But uh, let's go over the rest of the times here. So Raven Rogers got fourth place. Very... Um, the crazy thing is, if, if a thing Mo ran even worse than what she ran, Raven Rogers could have stole bronze medal position. And Jim Enrique, who's uh, Keely Hodgkinson's teammate, they were running together to ru the like most of the race until Keely broke out. That was a very interesting, like, I don't know if they talked about that. Like, let's run together. And they, let, and they break out when it's time. So, Jim Enrique had a nice fifth place finish, though. Uh, beating Nia Atkins, who was very hot this season. She cooled off at Worlds this year, from what I know. She really cooled off. Um, didn't quite have that same burst she even had at Nationals. Raven Rogers ended up beating her. I, I, that was a shocker for me as well. And then the rest went to form. You know, Nakai and Tracy. I, I didn't really figure them to be a factor in here. I, I, I figured they'd get the last two spots. So... For four to six, I think everything went according to plan. I, I just think the only surprise was Nia Atkins not being Raven Rogers. Jim Enrique, it was a nice fifth place hole for her. Um, nice, nice fifth place hole for her, in, in my opinion. Nice fifth place hole. Nice fifth place hole for her. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. So, from here, um, all right, let's talk about Themo. Let's let's talk about Themo. I really believe she's under. She's been an under participate uh, participation this year. She only had one race, and I think it showed. It clearly showed. It clearly showed in this race. That's why I'm thinking next season, a thing Mo is definitely going to have to start her season a little earlier too, probably like in May. Now I know she had uh she got sick in May of this year. She might have her her first race might have been the LA Grand Prix. She was there um, with uh, when Jenna uh, Prandini beat uh Gabby Thomas in the 200. She was there. Um. I will, like, let me say this, though. Let me say this, though. With that all involved, all of that detail, you know, I'd probably say, like, 
See, that's why I say it's like a it's like a either way type of thing. But it's definitely like, see, I think a thing more has to start a little early. Like I said, it's going to be an earlier season next year. I was talking about this. I don't know if I did talk about it. I think I talked about it in my Abby Steiner video that I did previously. I didn't release that one. But I was talking about how in that video it was going to be a shorter year next year. Sort of like last year. Because the Olympics is going to be in late July, early August. Mainly early August. So you know how the World Championships is in late August this year. That means probably about three or four weeks you don't have extra time to prepare like you did this season. This season was stretched out more. So it allowed a lot of girls to actually take more time. But this season... It really did play out like that extra time definitely was going to betray a lot of women. You know what I mean? Or, or a lot of participants this year in the season. Next year, it's a little bit, everything's moved up. You're going to have late June for uh, nationals, right? And then Olympics, like I said, late July. You might, and if the theme out, she might be able to take another race in July before the Olympics, maybe a Diamond League stop. And one thing, like I said, she should start in May, take a couple of races in June, and maybe one, it, it, maybe even, even do like two before nationals. I think even just doing like one in, I say like one in May, do another one in June, then you got nationals late June. You know, yeah, I think that'd be enough for a thing more to get her legs under her. You know what I mean? Because I think, I think she's showing a lot of rust to me this year. Like she's showing a lot of rust. But her time was still pretty good. I mean, anything, I'll say for a thing mode, anything under 1 minute and 57 seconds, that pretty much like, like in my prediction, when y'all watch my prediction video, I said anything between a minute 54 and a minute 57 will win this race. And we got one a minute 56 seconds won the race. So I think this is a good area. Like, this isn't so bad for a thing mode, but I think a thing mode probably knows she probably needs a one a minute 54 or 55 to really lock things up so i think that's going to be like her focus going you know more down the stretches okay I, I might need to do under a minute 56 to win and that might be what it takes for all of them to win next year i think it's going to have to be a little faster next year just due to the fact that what happened with mary moore getting this upset is definitely going to probably like push the girls even harder to do what they need to do so I, I I think that's where we're at. And like I said, I think for a thing more, she probably just needs like two races before nationals. Really good. And and because she remember she didn't run at nationals because she already had to buy it at Worlds. So she literally only ran one time before Worlds. And I think that's messed up. You gotta you gotta get in the regiment. That's why I don't really like the whole Bob Kersey philosophy too much. That whole barely racing thing. Because I think so. I think a thing mode is a rhythm runner, and she needs at least, at least I would say, cause cause nationals is go already going to give you about five, like three races right there. So if you could do nationals and then, like I say, you could maybe do two races before that, you'll have five races coming into the Olympics unless you take another race in July, just to make sure you're not got any rust under you. Maybe take another race in July and that's it. So you would have ran six times versus one this year. I will. I, I think if a thing more did that, it didn't get hurt in the process. I I, I don't think this will happen again next year. First of all, I don't think this happened again anyway. Mary Moore, as good as she is, she, she's not beating Hodgkinson and Mo like this again. <laughs> when you know it's a flop, here's the thing: when you know something is a uh, not a flop, a fluke, it's usually a fluke. And that's nothing against Mary Moore because she's actually really well. She's actually a really good runner. She's just not better than Hodgkinson or Mo. This is one of those um, nine times out of ten Mo or Hodgkinson will win. This is the one out of ten time where someone else besides the two won and, or Mary Moore beat him. And like I said, no, there's no disrespect. There's a reason why she came into the race as the third favorite, not the first or second favorite. And I think next year they will take they will take everything a lot more serious because this, this is going to be in their nightmares until the Olympics next year. For Hodgkinson and Mo not being able to get goals. But I think for Hodgkinson, since it was this wide open for her to not even have to worry about Mo this year, for her not to get gold, she's definitely going to be thinking like, damn, I had a chance to get gold. I let Mary Moore beat me. Like, 
that's something I think they're going to carry in because we've been seeing redemption so far. Redemption's been really playing out pretty uh, pretty hard at track. We saw it with Kerry Richardson and Noel Isles. Redemption for past seasons. Like, it's been playing out hard. Sharika Jackson, her 200. She got revenge for losing a 100. We saw Femke Bowl not only light it up in the hurdles with the second best time ever, but help her team win a 4x4. Four four. I'm going to go over that race in the next video as well. So be on the lookout for that. Um, so we've seen some, a lot of revenge stories, man. And track usually plays out like that anyways. That's why I love the World Championships being a year before the Olympics because it gives every competitor a chance to work on anything that they need to work on. And if they if they did fail at the World Championships or they or or maybe they didn't even qualify for World Championships and they have a desire to make the Olympics, it helps them so much to have that year before the Olympics happen. So pretty good stuff though, right? Uh for Hodgkinson, what should she do? Well, let's talk about Hodgkinson as a whole right now. I thought Keeley had a really good race because I think a time of a minute 56 seconds, 0.34, I think that's good. It just, in this race, for whatever reason, it wasn't good enough for her to get what she needed to get. But here's the thing that's interesting about Keeley Hodgkinson, though. So in the race, right, like I was saying, her and Jim Enrique, her, her teammate from uh, Great Britain, they were running together you know, throughout the race. What I did notice was this, because it was starting to look like Keely wasn't even going to be maybe even on the podium. Because she, I think she was like in fourth for a minute. And then, but I, I never really gave up on it because I know she's running a smart race. She's going to burst the last 100. So, but when I saw the race going like it did, right? And then what happened was in the last 20, mit, 20 meters, I think Moe's just kind of really slowed down, like the last 20, 30 meters. And then all of a sudden, Hodgkinson catches her. I think Hodgkinson knew she had a chance against Mary Moore. But the problem was she might have gotten her, her gear in a little too late. Like, I think she was cruising a little too late. And this comes with, I think, the lack of races for her this season as well. Because I think if she had a little, like even though she's better year to year as a, just as an overall runner, I feel like that that she did what Mo did, which was not take enough races this year. Like she started her season what in June, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't it June, guys? If it, it might have been May, but I, I I don't remember seeing Keely Hodgkinson taking too many races like she did last year. Um, she needs to get back to the schedule she was on last year, where she took more races. Take a like do the same thing as uh, a thing Mo did. Maybe take a couple of May races. Maybe take one of like a couple of Diamond League stops, either a Diamond League stop or a United States stop, like one of the Grand Prix or whatever. I don't know if they're going back to LA for the Grand Prix next year or they're going to go back to Eugene. Um, because y'all know the Nike Pre Fontaine Classic is basically the Diamond League final this year, so the Diamond League final will not be in the United States next year, so maybe that's going to be pushed up. She should probably run that race, and then take a take a, like I said before her nationals. Take another race in June. Either take one in May, two in June, or two in May, one in June, something like that. Three races before nationals, and then get, and then that'll probably help her get ready a little better for next year. Now, it's hard to predict between those two who's going to win. Because I thought, like like I said, today was a really good day for Hodgkinson because she has the confidence to know that she can beat a thing mode. Even though a thing mode, to me, this this isn't a regular thing mode, though. So it's kind of, I don't know, it's got, a, it's got like an asterisk to it to me because I know we won't see this a thing mode next year. I know we're going to see a way better thing mode next year. That's how I said, don't, don't, don't expect to see what you saw out of Mary Moore. But I think Hodgkinson maybe has a little confidence that she could beat her and maybe she'd be the one to, to strike gold. Because now Keely Hodgson knows her time definitely needs to be under a minute 56 to win. Like, I think all the girls, I think it's going to take that next year. But we will see. We will see. We will see. Let me talk about my best real quick uh, in the video. So, <laughs> y'all know how I went. If y'all watched my video yesterday, I said only bet 
a theme on Keely Hodgkinson. So my dumb ass ended up going all out. I went ten dollars on both girls. So actually eight I went eight dollars and fifty cent on Keely Hodgkinson because her plus was higher than Mo. So her plus I didn't need to spend as much. Mo Mo was still a plus though, which was which is interesting because I like taking pluses rather than minuses. Because I gotta spend more with minuses. And by the way, I learned something. I'm still a beginner with the sports betting stuff. I learned during the weekend, I, I talked to somebody as well. They told me never to spend that much money on a, a heavy favorite. Like, I spent like $20 on Femke Bowl and no allows to win. They said never do that again because if they lose, you're going to feel it. Don't ever spend that much because just don't, just don't take the bet. If they're heavily favored to win, just don't take the bet. Because it really wasn't worth it. Like, Femke... I can't remember with No Allows how much I want. I know it was more than Femke Ball. I think it was like 3 or $4. Or was it more? Or was it less with No? It might have been less with No. But I know Femke Ball got me like $2. But it wasn't worth taking just for $2. Taking that risk. But I felt like this was worth it though because it, today wasn't supposed to happen. Sometimes guys, uh, especially with betting, sometimes... Sometimes, guys, in betting, okay, sometimes the unexpected happens. It, it, it's going to happen. It, and it happened all week. This is the type of week where it was, like, not safe to bet. You know, we had what we had um, a few days ago in the 110-meter hurdles with Jamaica winning. You know, um, sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes it's not worth it. Like, if you had money on Jamaica last year in a 4 by one that's another upset. Maybe if you didn't have Kerry Richardson early in the week, you had Sharika or Shelly in. You know, sometimes it happens, but you can't be scared to take the bet. So I lost eighteen dollars straight up, but I had a chance to profit twenty. I was going to be up either for either girl. I was going to be up like twenty bucks. Um, had I won, I'm down eighteen, but it's okay because I know it's a fluke and it just. It's, it's it, it happens in this sport. Like, it happens sometimes. But I guarantee, I think if you do the same bet next year, you won't lose. Like, Mary Moore is not going to come in first next year. Trust me. They're going to be too motivated. Keeley and the thing will be too motivated. Too motivated by what happened this year. They know not to take the foot off. Because sometimes when you're the best, you're the two best, you, you, you forget about who's behind you. And I think that's what happened this year. And they didn't have enough races. And I think a thing more went into this thing too casual. Her coach did. Like, I don't think a thing did. Like, like they were saying the thing wasn't really smiling and stuff like that. And I think it's because she wasn't confident. I think when she tripped and fell, too, in the, in the semis, I think she just wasn't confident, man. Like, she needs to be in a rhythm. And she, this is why you run more races. I don't like the philosophy of running less races. I don't. I feel like that. I feel like you do that to, to not sustain injuries, but you also do that... When you do that as well, if it messes with your rhythm and your um, your rust, you know, um, track is another rhythm sport. Momentum is everything, bro. If you come in, like I believe the reason why Shakari and Noel Lyles had such a good World Championships because they came in with a lot of momentum. They ran a lot of races this year. Um, this is why this is why you got to take races, man. If you get injured, you get injured. It's, you can't avoid it. You can't avoid that. If it's just in the cars for you to get hurt, it's in the cars for you to get hurt. Don't try to avoid injuries ever. I hate it when people do that shit. Like, even in preseason football, like I'll be watching. I'm like, bro, these fucking coaches are so fucking scared to play their players, bro. I understand how important it is to have them available for the season. But, like, man, bro, players need rhythm, man. Because nowadays in the NFL, especially, players are just getting their rust out like the first two or three weeks now. In those first two or three weeks, it could be very, very detrimental, man. So, it's crazy stuff, man. I don't want to make this a long, long super long video. I think I'm already going 20 minutes because I got to talk about Finkel Bowl next. Uh, but going ahead and uh, give me y'all thoughts on this in the comment section. I really can't wait to hear from y'all. I'll try to respond to y'all this week when I have time, man. But going ahead and uh, also make sure y'all subscribe to Jacob the Analyst. I know he's going to talk about this stuff, too. I'm going to go ahead and get this video a like, share, subscribe, man. Shout out to any of y'all that comment or like the video, man. Really appreciate it. Or, or if you're new, subscribe, man. But thank y'all for watching, man. Tracking X. I'm going to go over uh, Femke Bowl and uh, Team Netherlands X.